pardon the background noise. This is a feed water tank for our 100 horsepower steam boiler. And this is the sample tower, cooling tower I built for sampling water out of the feed water tank. Uh, it does evaporate water out of here, so I'm going to install a fill line on this today. This is a line that runs from our uh, water softeners into the feed water tank. So I'm just going to put a T here, T off on the valve, and then into the sampler or cooling tower. I also just installed a new Cyclast tube I ordered from McMaster Car. But just doing a couple upgrades on this unit today, so I'm gonna go ahead and film it. Okay, first I'm gonna break this union. Using some Milwaukee 10 L pipe wrenches, these are awesome for working on three quarter and half inch line. Oh, should probably turn this heat valve off. There we go. Break this. Oh, holy smokes. Just hold. Oh, shaking the whole tank. Oh, there. That was on there. And there's not pressure on the tank, so that was on there really tight. This tank is meant to dance. Got this off. Pull this out. Hmm. Kind of tight. Getting in there. It's all been pretty tight too. I might grab a different wrench. That's a tight spot. Hmm. One sec. Okay, I got these 16 inch cobras on here. These seem to fit a lot better. Oh yeah. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna put some, uh, put a valve on, a T on this and some uh, appropriate sized nipples. Kind of glad I'm doing this little project. This three quarter inch line started to rot. This bottom end sits in water all the time. This is basically a float. Uh, there's a float uh, linkage in there and a copper ball. So when the tank level drops to a certain point, uh, it opens this little orifice in here and this water pressure fills the tank. So this little bung end, this little strainer right here, uh, has water in it all the time and started corroding our, this is just schedule 40 black iron, so only lasts so long. Okay, well I have, that's the feed water pump kicking out in the background. So here's the old one, here's the new one. We got it the same size, but running into some clearance issues. I'll have to figure out something else. Okay, I got a new six inch nipple from the bottom here. I was careful not to get pipe dope around the bottom of this uh, nipple lip so that I don't plug the screen in there or get any pipe dope into the orifice. This should all pull back as I screw this in.
my uh, soft plan. Sorry, the boiler's running in the background. This is that pipe I just took off. And this is uh, how that's going to sit in there. So that's the old union on the bottom. We're going to put a union up here and just cut this off the pipe so it's about the right length. Alright, so we got this threaded together. I'm just going to put this on here so I can pull a measurement from the top of the union up to this elbow that you guys can't see. in here this is the main shop this is that piece I just measured got the good old rigid 500 here shaking around, don't have a better place to mount it at the moment. Okay, here we go. See about this. Good enough luck with this stuff, Loctite LB8008. 
C5B. I like the copper stuff better than the aluminum for steam lines and stuff. So this is just what I usually keep around. Got enough of it to last a hundred years, so it doesn't take much. That'll do. Okay, so I actually will have to shorten this up just a stosh. It fits at the moment, but it doesn't fit super nice, so I'm just going to tighten some of these guys up. This is where these scopes come in handy again. Just fast adjusting pliers compared to a pipe wrench. You know, we got like one, two, three different sizes here, so this can be pretty handy. Okay, good enough. feed water tank again so this feeds our boiler when the boiler calls for water now this is the main softener fill line that I had valved off so I've been having to keep an eye on the cyclast tube here's the valve I had off for working this is a bypass valve for the softener soft water comes in here bypass valve so I can fill the tank while working on this line mostly just for cleaning the screen we're working on the small orifices in here which do plug from time to time. So now I'm just gonna run a nipple out of here, probably a 90 degree elbow to fill this cooler off. Fill the fill fill the cooler up. Fill 
Hill. Up. Okay, I'll do that. half inch pipe marked. I don't have to thread this end because it's just going to be sitting right above the cooling tower. So I'm just going to cut around the dry cut saw here. Cut. I'm going to deburr that a little bit. Alright, just to give myself some extra room, I'm going to quick take this flare fitting off. See, all this is is a uh, coil of copper tubing that runs through cold water. Because the feed water tank here, we have a spence valve on it, so it keeps the feed water tank at about uh, 150 degrees or so, which cuts down on our chemical usage uh, for water treatment. So it pays to have this tank heated. Uh, we don't spend as much on chemicals, uh, but the samples I take for testing the amount of chemicals we have in the water needs to be cooled off to uh, about 80 degrees or so, just for more accurate or more consistent sampling. Twelve-inch cobras. Love the cobras. Oh, look how nice and fast that is. So windy. I think I left myself plenty of room. Now, then the truth. Yeah, works good. I did notice that. Grab a light. It looks like this uh, strainer right here had been damaged in the past, and I think we're leaking just a little bit of water out of it. I'm not sure if it's cast iron or brass. I guess it's cast iron. But I think when I was tweaking on this pipe up here to take it off, the old one. I uh, opened that crack up a little bit. Looks like it's actually tried to been, somebody tried to repair it in the past. Almost looks like a weld tack right there. Actually, that's exactly what that is. Um, this is cast iron. I'm not surprised that that broke when I was reefing on this thing a little bit. I should have been more careful, but I think what I'll do is I'll uh, 
just take raise that up real quick and uh, that should seal it right back up. Just got a DC TIG welder and some uh, brazing wire. Might be able to just uh, even do it with the water on. But other than that, it works good. I was using my uh, Shuby nipple organizer. It carries a uh, half inch and three quarter, pulls up to six inch. I was also working on the uh, Pro ProPack Wrencher XL, super handy bag. This is my other cooling tower. This is what I use to pull water out of the boiler. Got this skimmer tube right here. Comes down to here. This is a constant blowdown valve that sends water into our steam separator and then into the trough. Then I've got a T on a flow adjustment valve from McMaster into this stainless steel. This actually used to be a uh, screw auger or a screw conveyor, a stainless steel screw conveyor that I tore the guts out of and sealed up real nice. And I've got the uh, sample tube running into this little steel cup and that runs down into the trough so I'm not spilling water when I'm taking samples from this particular location. This is another soft water line that I have for rinsing out uh, uh, sample vials and then I've also got another fill valve right here for this particular sampler. This one's a lot easier to put these accessories on because it's right next to this trough right here. This is a drain line for the sample tower. If I open this valve up right here, this line, this three quarter inch line that runs to the bottom of this cooler is actually primed with water. So I'll open this valve and it'll actually drain the entire tank of water, even though, as you can see, the valve's most of the way up the tank. So it makes uh, flushing this tank out a breeze. I do have some plans later on to do something like that here, but I'll have to figure out a way to run a garden hose across the floor or, you know, there's that whole issue. I don't want to run over anything overhead because then you deal with having to pump it and pressures and whatever. It just doesn't make a whole lot of economic sense, but there we go. Nice little project done. Thanks for watching.